Let me welcome you to PEP 300 at the University of Idaho in Department of Movement Sciences. So this is going to be your biomechanics course and we'll start um, our first lecture by trying to give you a little history about biomechanics and what it's all about, where it comes from and what you expect to learn this upcoming semester. When most people talk about biomechanics, they talk about it from a perspective of equations. Um, we have the very common Newton's second law, F equals MA, or law of acceleration, where we talk about the forces that are applied to an object of said mass will go through some change in current state of motion or attempted current state of motion. We also have the uniform, the equations of uniform acceleration uh, motion, and those are projectile motions where we can predict um, how long it is in the air or how far it's going to travel um, based off the velocities and accelerations. Um, so although and however many biomechanics classes are taught with these dominant uh, equation based. There's also ways to do this and, and that's hopefully what you'll get out of this class is how to describe motion and how we would talk about the differences between going up and down stairs um, and, and what would be the best approach to produce the highest or longest jump and as well as what is the best positioning for a squat when you want to attack a certain particular body part, right? Am I really going to go after the glutes um, or do I want to be more quad dominant? Or is this going to put my center, is this one here going to put my center of mass too far back where I'm not going to be able to go up properly and I put too much stress on my knees? So these are ways that we're going to discuss biomechanics in this class and dealing with different motions um, and throughout the class that hopefully will allow you to better illustrate and see biomechanics from more of a descriptive um, and qualitative yet quantitative without having to calculate all aspects. Um, so there are a couple of definitions and here we have one from David Winter, from Dr. Hotz, um, and the European Society of Biomechanics. And essentially all of these talk about biological systems and how it interacts with human movement um, and truly how we use things to diagnose, treat, and for our individual research processes. So when we talk about it, we talk truly about this concept of Newtonian mechanics and how we apply that to human movement. Um, there is a cause and an outcome that we will talk about, but truly we look at it from a performance or an injury prevention perspective. How can we maximize human performance while alleviating or reducing the ability to create injury? This is another quick schematic, um, basically taken from one of the textbooks, but you have biomechanics here. And if you break it down, you have bio, which is the human structure and function and how they relate to these mechanical concepts. Uh, we'll talk about what those mechanical concepts are and how we use the structure and function of the body to adapt and to manipulate our movement throughout this environment. So if we look at a basic schematic, we have biomechanics. And it's basically broken up into three components, and each component will be talked about in depth in this class. And our first module that we'll go over will be the functional anatomy piece. Um, and that's really so you can understand the components and structures of the body and how those adapt to overload and de-stressing symptoms. Um, and then we'll take it into the kinematics, which is the outcome of movement, and the kinetics, the cause of movement. So we break this forward, both kinematics and the kinetics, the outcome and causes of movement uh, are broken into both linear and angular components. And then we further break those down into the, what their components are. And you'll see that there is a position velocity acceleration. The only difference is whether we're dealing with the linear component or the angular component. And then you have torque, which is the angular analog to force. And we'll talk about how the radius at which that um, force is being applied to an axis of rotation gives you a component of that torque that tends to cause that rotation around the axis. And, and we'll get more into depth in each one of these. And um, so what you'll have is, is functionality will be module one, kinematics will be module two, and we get through this kinetics will be module three for the class. And that's how it's basically structured. Before we go further, let's really make sure that everybody knows what we're talking about when we talk about mechanics. Um, everybody knows what we talk about when we talk about anatomy, but if you want, really want to get forward, we need to understand and classify what mechanics is. And so when we're talking about it, we're understanding the forces, and these forces interact with our body and our system and the environment, and then they produce some sort of outcome, some sort of movement outcome. Whether you remain stationary or whether you go forward or slow down or speed up, these forces that interact within the system 
produce that outcome, right? And to make this more simplistically, we're going to talk about human motion and we're going to look at it as the rigid body mechanics. And so if we take the rigid body mechanics, we have two components, statics or dynamics. Okay, statics deals with non-accelerating motion and motion that is either constant or stationary. That is very key because what happens with statics, statics can be that it's something moving at a constant velocity or there is no velocity. Okay. So it doesn't mean that it always has to deal with stationary. That just means there's no change in the motion, okay? Human motion, and, and as we interact with our environment, is very rarely ever um, static because we have muscles and joints and ligaments that cause our motion and interact within the environment. So we're in a constant state of what we call dynamics, where you're accelerating or changing velocity in the motion. Um, and so that's why we deal a lot with in human motion and when we describe human motion, we deal mostly with the dynamics um, and we'll break that down into kinematics and kinetics uh, or, or the outcome of the movement, regardless of force or kinetics where it's, we're dealing with the forces that cause that motion. To finish off, we're going to talk a little bit about some subdisciplines that you can really utilize biomechanics um, and some of the analysis skills that you will have and learn in this class. Um, in your future endeavors. A lot of you want to go on to be athletic training or physical therapy or occupational therapy, or you want to go on to be some kind of sport coach um, or fitness trainer. And, and some, being able to analyze something from a biomechanical perspective, um, both quantitative and qualitative is essential. Um, some of those disciplines, clinical or injury, sports, comparative biomechanics, uh, equipment design, especially ergonomics, where you're working in the workplace and trying to figure out whether um, a certain type of chair or a um, certain type of desk works best, muscle mechanics, orthotics, and prosthetics. Um, this is prosthetics part is, is a fast up and coming um, field, and there's a lot of um, great work coming out currently um, from both an a engineer and a biomechanics perspective. Orthotics, of course, is a multi billion dollar industry. Um, and then you can also do computational biomechanics and this is a field that would really specialty if you're if you're more into the mathematical side of things and computational world of um, science and numbers um, but that'll be it for the introduction paragraph um, powerpoint so what i ask you to do now um, is go and find the asb or the american society of biomechanics history of biomechanics uh, it's posted inside of um, bb learning the module one um, and this will be some reading material that I would like you to read. Um, it'll give you a nice history of who we, um, which scientists and artists of, of the previous eras that are associated with the development of this field of applying mechanics to the body and, and analyzing human movement. And it'll give you a nice perspective on uh, what biomechanics is all about. So I look forward to a great semester. Thanks.